Well, guys, what are we looking at? This on the table, as you see in front of you, is the Laconico Design Andromeda, released by Artisan. And I like to say that this is the knife that kind of really got overlooked this year. There were some big tickets that got released. You had the, the Lago and the Pyrite and a bunch of other knives that came out this year. And this one kind of just fell by the wayside. And I think it's unfair. So let's turn this around, take a look at it from above. It's not going to be a real long video. We're going to look at the Laconico Design Andromeda button lock. Guys, like I said in the intro, this is the Ray Laconico Design Andromeda done by Artisan. It's done as a button lock, flipper only. It's got a really unique look and feel. I've done a couple videos about this, but I wanted to say, I think, like I said in the title, this is the little Laconico that got overlooked. And I think that it deserves a little bit more attention because it's a very unique looking knife, but it's also a very good little knife. Uh, so we're going to talk about it. I'm put up a spec sheet right here in the middle um, so you guys can see it. And uh, we'll talk about this. This knife is a lot of fun. It is one of the knives that came out through Artisan and CJRB recently that were done as button locks. You had the Pyrite, you had the Lago, which got the majority of the tension, but then there was this, which is the little button lock, like I said, Andromeda. And so as unusual as it looks, this thing is awesome. So this version is in ARRPM9. It's This is a prototype. Uh, this is an Artisan. It's done in green G10 ARRPM9. So let's go ahead. We'll get some knives out. We'll do a couple size comparisons. And then we'll get into what I really like about this knife and why I think it should have gotten a little bit more attention. Your first knife is the Artisan Design, or Artisan Ray Laconico Design Serious. And as you can see, very, very similar in size. This is hands down one of my favorite Laconico designs, uh, this Laconico Serious. Great, great, great knife. Um, so there you go. Your next knife's gonna be the Benchmade 940, which is a knife that more of you are going to know as a size comparison. You can see that the 940 is just a little bit smaller than the, than the, uh, the Andromeda. So, and then as always, your final knife is going to be, as always, the Chris Reese Sabenza, which is dimensionally a larger knife, but not that much longer in, in uh, tail to tip. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get the Sabenza out of the way. And that's a large Sabenza 21 for those of you new to the channel. I use this for pretty much every video as the final comparison because it is a really well-known knife. So it gives you a good reference for size. So let's get this out of the way and talk about this knife. So back to this knife. And when I say I think this knife got overlooked, I really think it did. I have not seen a lot of videos about this. I've done two videos about this knife. Um, I did uh, I did the full review and everything, but since this one is mine, this prototype was given to me by Artisan, um, I've done a lot of carrying of it, and I have to say, this is a great, great, great little knife, and I think it falls into a category of gentleman's folder that kind of bridges the gap between full-sized and small, but also has some tactical characteristics to it that make it very tactic cool looking uh so a lot of that has to do with just appearance so you have got a very nicely done ar rpm 9 blade now this was done also in uh s35 vn and titanium i think they did a micarta and s35 vn version and then this version which was done in a couple different colors of g10 now i personally am a fan of this version because I like the ARRPM9 steel. So you have a thumb flick only, a lot like the Pyrite. You have a thumb flick only button lock um, knife here that runs on, that is a thumb stud opener only, just like the Pyrite. But I think this got overlooked because the Pyrite was more mainstream and stuff, and this was just a little bit more unusual looking. Now, this thing has a lot of things going for it, especially in the comfort department. I typically don't like knives that are thicker here and then thin down, but with this little ramp here, you get a very, very comfortable forward leaning feel to it, and it does perform very well. And I have to say, it is very, very secure in hand. You have a very clean look to it. You've got reversible pocket clip. Now, I'm not going to do the good, the bad, and the ugly like I did in the in the full review. If you're curious about that, you can go find that video, which is just a, a way of me making this video lead you to go watch one of my other videos. So, um, but this thing is nice and slender, 
and has really good action, but you have a very tactical forward leaning look on that blade. It looks predatory. It looks like a shark of sorts, maybe a dolphin or something like that, but it's very, very, very comfortable in hand and it feels, it feels good. This is such a good little knife. And so I think, like I said, I just wanted to do this again because I feel like this one got overlooked with the Lago and the Pyrite, which are both great, great knives. I honestly think that the Lago is the best button lock knife that came out this year. And one of the things that this has going for it is it's nice and clean and your button is out of the way. It is flush almost with those scales. They're nice and chamfered and rounded. And so that gives you, when, when, a, when a knife is nice and rounded like that, it gives you a fuller feel in hand. It doesn't have to be big and thick, but when you chamfer it, it just feels more full in your hand because of that. You can get way up on this and get, by, even though it doesn't have a choil, you can get way up on this because there's no flipper tab and get behind that and do heavy, heavy cutting if you need to. But you can also get back here on this jimping. The jimping could have been a, a lot sharper. It's kind of smooth. But you can also get way up on this, like this, to do some fine cutting and scraping. I actually scraped some labels off with this um, and then touched it up on a ceramic rod. But all in all, this is an amazing little knife that has just gotten overlooked. So this isn't going to be a real long video. Uh, I just wanted to point out, I think this is one of the ones that you could add to a list of knives that you can pick up fairly cheap. I'll put the price up here. There'll be a link to it down below if I can find an Amazon link or a, a Blade HQ link. You'll have purchase links in both the description and the comment section. I'll pin the comment. But yeah, I'm really... I'm really surprised I have not seen more buzz about this knife on the market. Um, I do have to say, as much as I love Artisan Cutlery, they did a really good job with my Sea Snake. I feel as though they lack in the publicity department. They don't publicize much of their, their stuff. They have a, a loyal following, but they don't do a lot to step outside of that and get themselves a little bit more recognition. And I think it's sad because some of the designs they have out there are really really, really good designs and good knives that just get overlooked because they don't have the marketing out there for it. So that's one of the critiques I would have about Artisan and CGRB, their sister company. Artisan's an American company. CGRB is a Chinese company. They have this, they share the same production line. But I, I would say that that would be my biggest critique is that they don't do much in the way of publicity. Um, final thing on this, this does have a really nice deep carry pocket clip. And I say it's nice because it is not a hot spot. And that means that you can carry this way forward in the pocket, clear down below. Like the only thing sticking up is the pocket clip. The pocket clip is deeper than the actual knife scales itself. So if that's what you're looking for, I'll put a purchase link down here. Like I said, I think it got overlooked. You might be able to find some after Christmas sales, uh, pre new year sales, things like that. So Guys, just a short, quick video about a knife that I think got overlooked. Probably going to be one of my 1 p.m. uploads. Uh, those typically don't get as much traffic, but yeah. Let's turn this around, do some final thoughts, and send you out about your day. So there you go, guys. I do like this knife a lot, and I just feel it's kind of sad that it kind of fell by the wayside. I have not really seen much in the way of buzz about it. I look, there's not a lot of stuff online. There's not a lot of videos. And like I say, a lot of that is Artisan's fault. They do not put anything into marketing. It really is sad because they make some really, really good knives that need more attention, and a lot of them just go underlooked because there's no publicity. I know it's a small company. I know that it's basically two guys here stateside and a production company over at the production house overseas. So I do understand that, but it they're doing some really, really good work and have for a while. And it just doesn't seem like they're getting the buzz that they should. So I'm here to try and correct that because it's a very, very good design. I like, I like all of Ray's designs. Um, this one's up there. So guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but tell me why I can't change the content. If you don't, tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you've got it set for all. That way YouTube will give you three notifications, which I'm like, boys, that's not all, but that's all they give. So, um, and uh, make sure that you've got notifications turned on your device. The liking a video is the most important thing you can do. If you watch a video, you should like it. 
Unless you don't like it, then just give it a dislike, but interact with that video. The closer your interaction ratio is one-to-one -one views to likes or dislikes, the better a video does. You're not doing the channels you love any any good. You're doing them a disservice if you watch for more than 30 seconds and don't hit a like. So um, other ways you can support the channel if you want to do it financially, ton of affiliate links. There will be an affiliate link purchase link for this knife, both in the description and in a pinned comment for this video. Um, so that's one of the best things you can do for a channel is use their affiliate links if you want to support them financially, that is. That's the best thing is the affiliate links. Doesn't cost you anything at checkout and it directly supports the channel. I have a couple that have uh, discounts associated with Coffee Brand Coffee and Atlas VPN both have discounts. And any of the Amazon affiliate links that you see down below, it does not have to be the item you clicked on. If you're just going to buy something, use one of my affiliate links and go buy cases or coup you know coupon holders, whatever you're doing. Just go buy stuff with my affiliates. Um, other ways you can do it, I have a membership that is tier-based. Everyone has access to my Gilded server. Baseline and premium tier members are automatically entered into a giveaway that I do on the server, on the Gilded server. And the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube that's behind a paywall that only they can access. And the final way is I have a merchandise store, a number shirt co, where you can pick up my merchandise or other creators' merchandise at a discount of 10% if you use my coupon code CRAZYSHARP, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp. all one word, saves you 10% at checkout. Guys, that's it on this this one. I love you all. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I will see you in the next video.